I am excited to introduce this conversation with the divine expression of an herbalist, Abril. That name Abril means April. It means spring. Abril is in the word herbalist. If there was anybody that I wanted to take a course from, learn about herbs and tea and farming and land ownership, this is her, Abril, the herbalist, beauty, herbs, and tea, the girly black farmer. Our conversation begins speaking about herbs, speaking about cannabis, because we recorded on 420, so it was natural that our conversation went into cannabis. And then we start speaking about the harms that big manufacturers of tea do to you with the plastics in tea bags. And we speak about the energetic signatures of herbs and her experience with owning 87 acres of farm in progress. So comment, like, share, subscribe, check her out on her platforms, her Instagrams, Beauty Herbs and Tea, the girly black farmer. It is an exceptional conversation. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. It is a great day for herbs. Get yourself some tea. We are in for a treat. This is Gray Transforms. I am Travis Gray. Today we are transforming with our guest, Abril. Abril is the divine expression of an herbalist. She is an herbal business coach, teacher, and farmer. Abril owns 87 acres of land in Georgia, and I know she is just getting started. Abril, how are you today? How's the farm? I'm doing great. You know, normally I'm the person that's so energetic on these interviews. So I love that you can match my energy. Like, I love that I can feed off of your energy. Um, but yes, I am amazing this Thursday. It's Thursday is Thursday. This is <laughs> Thursday. Thursday. Uh, yeah. We're recording this conversation in April. Your name, Abril, it, it actually means April, uh, which I thought was fascinating. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, today is, uh, for a lot of people, th this won't go out today, uh, th this will be published a little bit later, but um, for today, we're recording this on 420, which is an, an, a very, a very herbal, auspicious herbal day. <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, that is an herb. <laughs> that is, is an herb. herb, you know, that a lot of people like to partake in, so... Yeah. Happy 420 to all of my 420 partakers. I did live in California for 10 years, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> what part of California did you live in? Um, I was in LA. In LA, yeah. Yeah, yeah for, uh, LA. for sure. So, so there, I'm in the Bay Area, so there's a lot of uh, 420 partaking today. I'm just I'm just having this great conversation with Abril the Herbalist today. Have you had, have you partook yet? <laughs> Or are you yeah. partaking after? Yes, today. No, 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 Not no. yet. Okay. I mean, no judgment if you have. <laughs> and and, uh, and and probably probably won't today uh, at all because I I love uh, marijuana as an herb. It's really uh, interesting that now <laughs> I guess we're we're jumping into the conversation with marijuana. I love marijuana as an herb. It does have it, it has been known to have a lot of potent medicinal properties for a lot of people, um, but there are some there are some effects that uh you know are not good for me in all like all states of consciousness are not good for all people at all times and so i'm doing a lot of work right now i'm doing a lot of work on my dissertation my doctoral work uh, i'm trying to focus on my priorities if i smoke weed all day that just won't get done. One hundred percent. Um, I like to say that I'm not, you know, a canna girl just because of the way the herb interacts with my system. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually made an Instagram reel where I was giving cannabis alternatives to people who were just like me. Cannabis to me, it knocks me out. I've tried every strain. I've tried every method. I've tried tinctures. I have asthma, so I can't smoke. Um, I've tried, you know, sal and oils and literally fresh dried, it knocks me out. Now, 
this herb has been, you know, used, especially by natives um, as, you know, some healing medicinal value, you know, they use it to heal in different modalities, but today it's used traditionally to calm and relax, which I have no issue with that. Um, I am all for using of herbs that our ancestors used traditionally. And, you know, just as long as you respect the way it's been used. However, like I said, that herb for me, hasn't been the greatest experience. So I like to, you know, promote alternatives to cannabis. Um, but if you want to try it, go ahead and do it. I don't believe, you know, in the stigmatization of the herb. It is a herb. It's a herb that just happens to be heavily policed. But when you go back to the origin of it, it was yet another herb that Native Americans use in their divinations, you know, in their healing practices. And the thing that, that needs to be said is that isn't the only herb with that effect out there. <laughs> it is just the herb that people have decided to, you know, really criminalize, you know, heavy and focus on. But there's literally so many other herbs that can give you that sort of effect, like blue lotus. Like, I don't know if you've had that before. It is an intense dream herb. I talked about blue lotus, no? We talked about blue lotus when we had originally met, but... I have some, I have some blue yeah. lotus. When I had some, now you have to have some that's fresh and potent. But when I had some, it was I was on cloud nine. <laughs> so yeah, it's not the herb for me per se, but I am all for people who uh, decide to use it responsibly for you know whatever wellness issue or if you just want to relax. It is a relaxing nervine herb, and so that is its purpose. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, it, it is it is cool that you just mentioned that the. The herb is is interacting with your chemistry, your physical chemistry, and you know subjectively, you know the phenomenal experience, the the lived experience of how that is affecting your body, and that is how you're going to discern if this is if this is something that you're wanting to be participating in, partaking in, um, uh, long term or, or or just like over time. Like, is this the right time and space for me to be <laughs> knocking out? Well, when I when I take marijuana, uh, I, I have asthma as well. Uh, so I, so I grew up uh, with uh, a lot of uh, breathing problems. Um, my breathing over time, understanding better about breath and um, and and in my j just like my oxygen intake, understanding more about the carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange in the lungs, in the body, in the blood. That has really helped me uh, have a better experience with asthma, but uh, but I still do have a, a hard time at times uh, with with marijuana or or other kind of like uh, inha inhalation uh, methods uh, around. But uh, marijuana for my body chemistry, it keeps me up. It, I I I will not smoke weed. I will not partake in the substance. Uh, the, these days, I will not partake in the substance like late at night. Um, I, it, uh, I know that it, it disrupts the dreaming experience and dreaming is a really important, uh, it, it's really an important aspect of your, of your mental recovery at night. Uh, having dreams is, is telling you that you were in REM sleep, that you had a better quality of sleep. So it does, it does disturb some things. It, it, it is it is having different effects on different people's bodies. And it's, and it's important for people to pay attention to that. Yeah, what a lot of people don't mention, and actually in that Instagram reel that I had on my page about cannabis alternative, I actually had a lot of the people who are pro-cannabis attack me because they're like, what do you mean? Cannabis is amazing. And I'm like, yeah, it is, but it doesn't work for me. They're like, well, maybe you need to take it this way. You should probably should have did this. And so what to speak to your point about cannabis, you know, interacting differently with certain people, what people don't understand is that our bodies have its own energetic frequencies. And the herb itself also has its own energetic qualities. And so when you take an herb, you want to find an herb that also matches up with your energetic quality or the energetics of your state, your current state for whatever you're trying to alleviate with. 
and energetic qualities. That is something that is practiced a lot in traditional medicine. You can go into, you know, Ayurveda medicine and traditional Chinese medicine and African medicine, and they all um, focus on energetics, you know, whether it's life force or this or that, that is energetics, you know, of the body, plant, tissue, whatever it may be. So what that means is my body energetics may be one way and this herb may be doing something completely different that my body doesn't need right now. (laughs) And so that's why it can interact, you know, with certain things going on in my body. And as herbalists, That is one thing that separates us from allopathic medicine is we don't treat, but we do help people holistically. So we consider the whole body. So we're not just considering your symptoms. We're considering your energetic states as a person. Are you an energetically hot? person? Do you have an energetically hot condition, whether it's inflammation or it's anxiety? Those things are energetically hot, which would require an energetically cooling herb to be able to help. We're considering all of that, your personality, your tissue state, everything. So people don't understand that it's that, you know, intricate, like you just don't take herbs and be like, oh, it doesn't work. It may not work for you, but there is a herb that may work great for you that, you know, doesn't work for somebody else and vice versa. Wow. that That's fascinating. That That's like what, what people, what people do with uh, personality assessments and try to uh, type a personality uh, psychologically to um, best align with them in business or in their relationships, um, things like this. So I, I really love that you're taking that holistic approach to understand the herbs from that energetic frequency that 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 sort of way and and i know that there are going to be some people <laughs> that are going to see this and they're going to be like oh well uh, she's taking an indica he's taking a sativa and, and, and they don't really know what they're talking about with herbs that's me i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i, I, I was a <laughs> yeah, I, I was an herbal entrepreneur uh, for for a long time i i, I was an herbal entrepreneur for for marijuana so um it uh uh it, it, it is great uh love marijuana uh lo- love love uh my my friends and family uh that partake um but uh this is important information that that energetic frequency um sometimes you're energetically hot you might need an herb to uh treat a condition that is energetically cooling uh really love all that but uh we we just jumped right into to herbs and marijuana, which I love. Which I, I mean, I I just so resonate with your energy. Really uh, love this, Sabriel. Thank you so much. So, how did you begin in herbalism? How did you come across this? Um, this is uh, fairly new, uh, business wise, entrepreneurial wise. But uh, how did how did this begin for you? Yes. Well, I've been studying herbs, herbalism, you know, knowledge from my ancestors for well over 10 years. And I got on this journey the similar way of most people getting on this journey, which is I had a wellness issue that I wanted to learn how to remedy with herbs. And so I was able to do that and heal myself of that issue. And I'm like, well, what else can I heal? (laughs) And so I went down this rabbit hole of learning. I started off being self-taught. I eventually enrolled in like five different herbal programs. Um, I've gotten several certifications and then that was still missing. It was still missing something, you know, as far as with my education, I was still missing something in that field. So I started traveling and I realized the knowledge that I was missing was the indigenous piece to herbalism. So a lot of westernized herbal programs, they just teach you about the herb itself and say, here is ashwagandha, take it for mental health, but they don't teach you about where it comes from, the tribe that used it, how they used it, how it's grown, harvested, all those things. And so I wanted to learn how my ancestors use these herbs. So I actually started traveling to different indigenous countries, learning how these herbs were used. So I was able to literally go to a village and, you know, speak with a local shaman or medicine woman, a medicine man. It's interesting in a lot of different tribes, a medicine person is the woman, is a woman of the actual tribe. But I was able to speak with them, to practice with them 
and learn a lot of techniques from them that I have now taken my knowledge and started a successful tea business as well as a successful school, an herbal wellness school that teaches people about tea about herbs and how to start an herb-based business. And now I am opening up my own herb farm and school and herbal retreat space. So uh, um, yes, I've been doing a lot. I've been blessed to say the least, but I don't look at it as that. I'm blessed to teach and I'm blessed to be able to share more information with people who normally would not have access to it. Yeah, you're blessed to be a real the herbalist. You know, your breath. You're blessed to be who you are and do what you do, uh, and and it is amazing. It's inspiring to others. Um, so uh, at 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 this uh, music festival, you had the opportunity to teach about business. How important is the the business knowledge to to support the herbalist knowledge? Yeah, so the festival you're speaking about is called Envision Festival. Um, I honestly did not know of it before I was contacted to teach <laughs> at the festival. Truth moment, I probably would not have taught at the festival knowing what it was, you know, after experiencing it, just personal experience. But um, I was, you know, reached out to, to teach people about, I had three different talks or classes or sessions. One was about healing the body with herbal teas. The one that you came to was about um, how to start an herb-based business or how to scale your herbal business, how to use herbs and take this knowledge you have about herbs and about living sustainably and now how to start an herb-based business to sustain yourself. So the first one was about how to sustain yourself and be sustainable with herbs, teas, and healing your body. The second one was a follow-up to now say, hey, if you like herbs, now you can talk about how you can, you know, have an herb-based business to also sustain yourself. So let's just say if you want to live off grid somewhere or you want to, you know, live from the earth, it is possible to live from the earth with herbs, as long as you're doing it respectfully, it is possible to do that and be able to support yourself and make a profit from it. And then the last uh, session I had was called Women of the Land or Land Stewards or something. And it was a panel discussion. Um, I don't know how many of us was on the panel, but probably like five or six of us that talked about being female landowners and stewards of the land. And so that was a really powerful session as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the question. Did yeah. I answer the question? Yeah. No. You. You. You certainly did. Uh, there. There's uh, six people, right? Um. On the. On that. On that panel talk, I believe. Um. So. Uh. How important is it for business knowledge to support? Ah, yes. But then we got into the. You know, so <laughs> I felt like I had to explain the classes first before going into it. Um. Yes. Yeah, so that class you're talking about. It was one of the favorites just because this topic, and I've honestly had some interesting discussions recently in this space of being able to monetize herbal knowledge. There are a lot of different feelings when it comes to this space, just because of the capitalistic view <laughs> of the world, um, how herbalism has been colonized, um, meaning that most of this knowledge, keeping it 100% real, has came from indigenous people. And con you know, companies have taken this knowledge and now have made big businesses out of it without respecting where it comes from. And so... People believe that if you come into this space that you, you know, to be anti-capitalist, you cannot profit from this space. You have to be poor. You have to, you know, be struggling, even if you are giving all of your energies for this, you know, to help people that you cannot live off of this. That would not, you know, be in line with our ancestors. And so I take a different approach 
on this knowledge. So my approach is respect the ancestors. Myself, I'm Yoruba and Seminole. I 100% respect where I come from and I respect the teachings of the herb. I literally got, you know, traveled the world to learn how these herbs were made and prepared. I believe as long as you come at it from a respectful standpoint, you're honoring the herb itself and where it comes from, then you're able, it's nothing wrong with being able to now take your knowledge and respectfully make, you know, an herbal business. If you are called to heal, to help, to do anything, it is respectfully okay to be able to now say that I want to do this. I want to help people. And it's okay if you want to make an income off of that, whether it's 40,000, you know, a year, a hundred thousand, whatever, as long as it's done with the right mentality and you're not solely in it for the money, I am fine with that. But people don't believe, people in the space don't believe in that. Like I, it's interesting being in this space. I have had, again, conversations with people who they don't respect. I've been called, this is interesting. I literally just had this discussion with somebody. Um, someone told me that I was a plant exploiter <laughs> because I was benefiting off of the plants. And I'm just like, I've never heard that before, but I'm exploiting the plants for financial gain. However, this person in itself, they had a program that they were offering that was $2,000. And I'm like, well, if I'm a plant explorer, <laughs> what are you? you know, and so people just don't like, people have never seen what, you know, what I'm, I'm doing um, with someone who looks like me. That's the real question. That's the real issue here is that people have never seen, you know, again, someone that looks like me do what's being done, but there's, you know, hundreds of organizations, there's herb schools, there's, you know, herbal companies who are monopolizing off of this knowledge, but it's no issue for them when they do it. But when, you know, this interesting looking Black girl comes and is, is teaching people about financial security, it's an issue. So I, my main thing is sustainability. And so um, that's where I focus my teachings on is how to create a sustainable, you know, business. And so it has been important to me. I have to this date been able to help thousands of people uh, start herb-based businesses in my herbal school. I have over 2,000 people enrolled, um, but my following on social media, I have close to 300,000 followers on all of my programs combined. And I have people coming up to me every day saying, oh my gosh, bro, you have helped me, you know, start an herbal tea business or now I'm going around the world and I'm traveling while speaking. And so I just know that it, what I'm doing is it's, you know, it's needed. Abriel, if I wanted to learn about herbalism, I want to learn from a black girly farmer like this. <laughs> like I want to learn from you. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it it is. It does seem to be like a forgetting that that it is indigenous people's knowledge. It's like it's like we over time we uh, we fail to cite our resources. It is so important uh, as a scientist, as a scholar. Call it what it is. It's appropriation and colonization. <laughs> appropriation for sure, but uh, uh, but 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 uh, but citing your resources as a scientist, as a scholar, is like. It's like where where did that information come from? If you don't do that and 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 you and you begin to say, oh well, this is my information, then you're right. It, it is appropriation. Is it? It, it is. Uh, it is colonization. It is imperial. It is the result of imperialism. Um, uh, all of those things. So it, it is like this uh, dominant uh, societal hierarchy thing that maybe the last three conversations, the societal dominance hierarchy keeps coming up, um, but. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's uh, it's crazy. I, I I would I would love to learn more herbalism from Abriel the herbalist. Um, so uh, <laughs> earlier, I, I just took a sip of my tea, and uh, earlier uh, before we started our our conversation, uh, you had mentioned to me that, uh, but because I I said that I I didn't have a tea infuser, I, I had broke this like glass uh, pot that I that I usually have for tea. Um, but uh, I I am now using like packets, 
And um, that that was just for now, just for for what I had, it was fine. Um, but uh, but you had told me something about that. What what are the problems, or what what is the uh, uh, what are the challenges, problems with um, with using a tea packet? Oh, well, thank you for asking a tea-based question because tea is my jam. Um, That is what I specialize in. So I specialize in making medicinal custom tea blends for a variety of wellness issues. That's how I got popular on social media was I was, you know, having customers come up to me or clients come up to me asking for tea blends for, you know, for infertility, breast milk production, um, different uh, digestive issues, cancer, herpes, literally everything. And I am blessed with, you know, being able to say that I'm a tea blending expert. And so I know what compounds go together to make a medicinal potent blend to be able to help with whatever issue you have it, you're having. And so when it comes to tea, most people who drink tea, they're drinking it straight out of the, the tea bags in the grocery stores. They're drinking the Bigelow, the Yogi, the Lipton's. And what most people don't know is that herbs have a shelf life of about one or two years from harvest from when it's plucked out of the ground. Those teas in the bags and the boxes have been sitting on the shelves before getting to you for years. So what does that mean? That means that you're drinking old stale herbs. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a tea, maybe it was a stress relief yogi tea and you put one tea bag in there and it didn't do anything. You know, maybe you put a second one in there and still nothing. It's because it's always stale. Um, also, the herbs in the tea bag, it is literally dust. You're drinking the dust of an herb. They grind it down so much that it's literally dust particles. And when an herb is degraded, the more it's degraded, the more shelf life it loses. So that one or two years is even less because of the surface area that's exposed. Um, if that doesn't make you want to throw your tea bags away, also we mentioned that tea bags contain microscopic plastic. <laughs> so when you're drinking it, you are drinking plastic if it is used, if it is sealed. So what I tell people is don't go and run and throw all your tea bags away this very second. Drink what you have, but try to buy loose leaf herbs from the stores. You won't find these in grocery stores. You want to go to companies that sell like bulk loose leaf herbs like Mountain Rose Herbs or Star West Botanicals and start making your own tea blends. They actually also sell tea blends as well. So if you want to, if, you, if you're lazy and you don't want to make your own, you can buy them from those companies companies or source from small businesses who, uh, you know, make loosely tea blends as well to get the full medicinal benefit of it. <laughs> you made me feel so not great about my tea right now. I mean, like I said, you could drink your tea, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I no. I tested out this theory, actually. I tested out this theory. Mm -hmm. So um, I went over my partner's house and um, I was over there for like the weekend and I started my cycle. And so typically I have herbs, you know, for that time of the month that will just knock it out. Like, you know, I'm not in pain. I don't feel anything, but I didn't have any herbs. So I'm like, okay, I know the grocery store carries this tea. It was called a red raspberry leaf tea. I'm like, I know one tea bag is not going to cut it. I'm going to take all 16 tea bags and brew it. That has to work. That has to help me knock out these, you know, cramps. I did that. So I took all 16 tea bags of this, this tea that is known to help with women who have cramps when they're on that time of the month. And for me, it normally knocks them right out within, you know, 30 minutes. Took all 16 tea bags and I drank the tea. It did nothing. 16 tea bags. It did nothing. Just to add some context to it, in one tea bag, it contains uh, two teaspoons of herbs. And one tablespoon, it's three teaspoons per tablespoon. 
So you can do the math. 16 tea bags. <laughs> nothing, it did absolutely nothing. That meant that the herbs, they were old and stale and that they lost all of their potency. So from, you know, a couple teaspoons of the pure herb, I would have been great. But I was actually, that's funny that we bring this up. I actually um, had, it was California. So I had my partner go and get like a cannabis tincture and that helped. <laughs> That actually helps. <laughs> I was knocked out, but I was happy. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, they, they, they are just, they're just playing us on the T shelf. They, they, yeah. They're just playing, they're playing games. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some health benefit from this tea. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a good, uh, healthy caffeine, maybe, um, you, you, you know, uh, during the pandemic, I, so before the pandemic, pre pandemic, I, I never, really took any kind of caffeine uh no I, I don't drink coffee um I I I knew that I loved tea uh from childhood I know that every once in a while when I had the opportunity to drink tea probably like Lipton probably some shit dusty <laughs> old uh you know old dusty crap tea uh it, but it tasted good I liked Lipton and you know, I, I knew that I liked tea, uh, but I wasn't really into it all that much. But during the pandemic, we're sitting at home all the time. We were like stuck in our in our homes and things. And so I uh, I decided that, you know, while I'm studying and things, I, I want to get into tea. And then I and then I got into tea. I have I have an assortment of teas. I, I do prefer the loose leaf tea um, and uh, and I like matcha a lot. So. Do do you um do you have like a a pre, uh, uh, many different herbs for many different reasons um do you do you like matcha matcha you you just mentioned that uh, it has more surface area because it's ground up so um so matcha very powdery and uh, this like this whole ceremonial grade idea is this um is this gonna have less shelf life um, maybe. Maybe maybe that's why I go to some matcha places and it's not it's not the same quality as other matcha places it, or or I go to the same uh, coffee place the same tea place and my matcha one day is really great and the other day it's not. Um, can you do you, what 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 can you tell us about matcha? Um, it's an herb, <laughs> like every other herb, and it is consumed in its ground form. So you are correct. If the more it's ground up, the less it, the more it loses its medicinal value over time. But one thing that actually makes masha masha is the fact that it is ground. So the theory is because it is ground, you're consuming the whole herb, which means more caffeine because you're taking in the whole herb versus just the extract of the actual herb. So that is a benefit of consuming matcha. But yes, um, it is, you know, it's ground. <laughs> so it might not be as potent. It might not even have as much caffeine as you're thinking that um, you, you know, want to get. And if you are a caffeine person, there's a few other herbs that you can try that have a higher content. Um, like yerba mate is one of those herbs. It, it has about 80 milligrams of caffeine compared to coffee's 90 milligrams without all the jittery side effects. So that is something that if you want that caffeine, you can incorporate into your diet or you can also incorporate adaptogen herbs, which actually internally help you increase your energy if you are somebody who struggles, you know, chronically with low energy. So there are some ways to get around it. Unfortunately, you will never get that instant um, feel of caffeine. I mean, coffee, caffeine, coffee bean is an herb. <laughs> it is an herb itself. It is classified as a nervine stimulant, which means that it stimulates your nervous system. So unfortunately, you will not get that, that coffee feeling from these other herbs, but it'll be more a, of a gradual alertness. Yeah. So is, is there any truth like like is is matcha ceremonial grade matcha does that does that make it uh, a more potent antioxidant are there other herbs that are uh, better more potent like for antioxidant purposes 
I mean, uh, I have not myself had ceremonial grade matcha. I just feel like that's marketing (laughs) just because matcha is going to be matcha. Um, Now that may have been in the powder form. That may be how certain cultures consume matcha. So it may have been consumed in a ceremony in its powdered form, but I think that's just marketing to get you to buy it. Yeah, yeah. They they got us again. They got me again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm easy to sell to. Like, <laughs> like I'm easy to sell to. Ceremonial grade, ceremonial grade me all day. Uh, the yeah, the uh, matcha is already, you know, the way that is probably used in ceremony. So it's, you don't have to call it ceremonial grade because it's already powdered. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like I said, it's it's marketing. <laughs> it means it's fresher. I, I don't even know. It's marketing. Oh, it's, it's it's literally marketing. I don't think that there's anything that they're putting differently because of the herb is the herb, unless it's being prayed over. You know, if it's that's the only thing I can think of. If the it's herb. <laughs> halal. It's a halal grade. That's the only thing I can think that, you know, it, they prayed over it themselves and they, you know, maybe set it out in the, you know, at the nighttime to harness moon energy. I have no idea. But if they incorporated certain ceremonial features, then that's one thing. It yeah. should say that on the box. But if not, it's just powdered. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I like a gunpowder green tea, too. And I, and I know that the 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 gunpowder uh, piece of it is something about like the pan frying, like the way that they um, the way that they process these tea leaves. Um, uh, wh- what what are the differences in the way like when 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 teas are processed differently, to, uh, uh, better things come out. Certain herbs need to be processed specific ways. So interesting fact that um, most caffeinated herbs, so your black tea, your green tea, your oolong tea, your cincha green, gunpowder green, your white tea, it all comes from the same plant, which is called the Camilla sinensis plant. And so the way you get these different types of teas is harvesting and processing. Mm. And so you get different flavors, you know, different, it's mostly the flavors that come with it as well as the different properties because black tea has a higher caffeine content than a green tea, you know, and then matcha is ground. So that has a little bit more higher than a traditional one. So yes, to answer your question that it's the same plant, (laughs) it is just harvested and processed differently. Differently. It's aged differently to give you a different taste, to give you different, you know, flavors. That's the same as taste, and to give you different properties as well. It's all the same plant. Can you? What was the name of that plant again? Camilla sinensis. You can Google it. Camilla sinensis. It's the same plant. It's called the wow. tea plant. <laughs> Man, that, that, this is all just marketing. Okay, so. Um, what are what are some of your like favorite herbs? What what are herbs that you uh, gravitate to most, and and for like what reasons? Um, I don't have a favorite herb. I literally drink about seven cups of tea a day. And so for me, I drink teas for wellness issues, so to stay healthy. Um, I do have teas that I drink that, you know, for pleasure based, but I don't have just one herb that I will drink. I do have herbs that I love the smell to. Like I smell my herbs, like chamomile, for example. It The smell of it is amazing. So I will literally open up a jar of chamomile and smell it, sniff it. But I don't have herbs per se that I is this herb, I'm gonna take it all the time, just because again, I take it for a reason. So I'm not just drinking tea to drink tea. I'm normally, majority of the time, I'm drinking tea because I haven't taken medication in over eight years. So I'm drinking tea because I have a headache. If I have, you know, PMS symptoms, I have gas or bloating, you know, different wellness issues that people would go and get NyQuil, Pepto-Bismol, you know, all of these over-the-counter medications, I'm drinking it in a tea form. So it's not really a favorite. Um, I do have certain herbs that for me are a preference, meaning they work better than other herbs herbs or it's just a preference because I've used it the most so I know it works but not necessarily like this one tea I'm gonna drink till I die like no (laughs) so so you don't have like maybe like a like a daily ritual sort of uh 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 go-to tea like um there's a lot of uh there's a lot of people that maybe like a uh, a water with lemon 
and uh, apple cider vinegar. They uh, do something like that, like electrolytes, uh, uh, some minerals, maybe some salt in there. Um, uh, and, and they'll, they'll have that as like a, uh, like a morning drink every day. Is, is there, is there, um, a sort of tea that like wakes you up? This is the first tea, uh, anything like that? So here's the things about the thing about herbs. Um, when it comes to herbs, you don't want to drink it every day just because your body can get used to it. And it's not going to do what it needs to do when it's time to do it. <laughs> so I do not believe in drinking the same thing repetitively every day. Um, I will actually, I might drink one thing for a week and then I'll rotate out that tea blend. Um, so like today I am drinking feverfew and meadowsweet. I had a headache earlier. These are headache-based herbs to help with the headache. Um, yesterday I had a lavender lemongrass and hibiscus tea, delicious. It was more of a, of a pleasure tea for me. Um, and I had a tea that was like nettles and a red clover, which was for me, it was more of a multivitamin. I felt a little depleted in my minerals. So I drank that tea. And so literally I don't have a routine because I don't believe in taking something every day consistently um, for longer than three months. That's the, the rule of thumb, whether it's for a wellness issue or just generally, I want the tea to be able to work when it's supposed to work, you know? So that's a personal preference. Okay. So uh, uh, am I, am I hearing this correctly? Like the, the reason that we were taking the, that we would be taking these herbs is sort of like the adaptive response that our body has towards those, towards the incoming of the substance so that it can it can you know be directed to heal whatever is ailing us in that moment for that reason of taking the tea. That's why I drink teas is for you know to help with you know it's wellness. I drink it for wellness. Now I'm not that's not to say that you tea is not you know a pleasure experience too. It's a vibe. Drinking some tea you know and your your tea mug it's a whole vibe. So you can 100 percent drink tea just because. Me personally, I tend to drink more for health and wellness over just because. Um, and if I'm drinking it for health and wellness, I'm very strategic in how I drink it and how long I take it. Now there are, depending on the wellness issue, if you're having an acute versus, you know, chronic issue, you may need to take that herb every single day. You know, like if you're trying to um, recalibrate or rebalance out your nervous system hormones, maybe you struggle from anxiety or depression. And, uh, you know, that can be due to the nerves, the hormones in your brain and body being thrown off. If that is the case, then you may need to take an herb like ashwagandha every day in high doses for the next three months in order to be able to rebalance out your nervous system hormones. So in that case, then yes, you know, that is fine. Um, I have done that before, but even still, you know, I don't take it more than three months. I will, you know, cycle out to the next herb. But traditionally for me, tea has been, you know, for wellness. Mm -hmm. do, do you, um, do you do any kind of like uh, mixing of mushrooms into your tea? There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of popularity these days with these health drinks that have, mixed in like quadriceps mushrooms or uh, lion's mane mushrooms and things like this uh, to, um, to, you know, there, there's some like great properties with that. Is there, do, do you, do you like that? Is, is that something that you've, you've done before? Yeah. Mushrooms are herbs. <laughs> Oh, mushrooms but, are herbs. The, are the, herbs. Okay, cool. Yes, an herb. Um, I like to say an herb is any plant with medicinal value. Mm -hmm. So I use herb interchangeably a lot of times with the term plant, but generally an herb is anything with medicinal value, whether it's a mushroom, a tree, a shrub, a flower, it is an herb itself. Um, so medicinal mushrooms are quite amazing. They're known, most of them are known as adaptogenic herbs, just like ashwagandha, adaptogenic herbs are a category of herbs that means that it internally helps your body to adapt to stress while also balancing out other functions and features of your body that can contribute to stress, meaning your immune system, your digestive system, or all of these systems. Um, you mentioned mushrooms and cordyceps have actually gotten a lot of popularity because of the new TV show, Last of Us, that is about zombie, people being turned into zombies with cord because of cordyceps mushrooms. Interesting. <laughs> have you seen the show? 
No, I, I, I didn't know about the show. The hey. Cordyceps mushrooms I know about because um, the uh, the Chinese Olympic uh, t- uh, team, th- there is a Chinese Olympic team that ran long distances and they used quadriceps mushrooms because they grow in high elevations. And uh, they would use those to uh, to be able to work the oxygen better. They, uh, essentially, they didn't they didn't need to take uh, days off of their training as much as other long distance running athletes. And so they would take in quadriceps mushrooms. Yeah, there is a whole TV show about uh, cordyceps mushrooms uh, turning people into zombies. It's called Last of Us. <laughs> that, seems, that seems crazy. That seems wild. Actually, yeah, it's not. It's not a you know a. It's an interesting TV show, but the mushroom itself is quite interesting. The way it grows, it grows off of. It's like fungus that grows off of like like a caterpillar. Like it's kind of weird. <laughs> That's the way it grows in nature. But people have simulated it by growing it, you know, in grains. But um, it grows off of bugs. <laughs> So yeah, it's like the outer coating of this the this bug that it has, you know, turned into a bug. It's it's interesting. Um, I like it. I actually love cordyceps. It has an umami flavor. It's giving like an umami spice flavor. I personally love it. Um, cordyceps is great for anxiety. Um, it helps to balance out those anxiety hormones in your brain and your body. Um, there are several medicinal mushrooms that are amazing that are also adaptogens. Cordyceps being one of them, reishi, ganoderma, lucidum, that's a uh, adaptogen herb amazing for anxiety, amazing for sleep, for energy. Um, there's turkey tail, there's lion's vein, chaga, all of those are great um, immune system. They have um, immune amphoteric properties. They have immune modulating properties, which means that they can go in and help your body to stimulate, to produce more white blood cells. If you have some kind of autoimmune thing going on, it can help balance out that. I take them, I take those a lot myself. I actually trying to see if I have any tinctures over here. I have a little herb shelf like right behind me, but I think I have like a a reishi tincture back there that I use as I do show from autoimmunity from time to time. And so I will take reishi um, around the time where I'm feeling a little sick to help give my white blood cells a boost. But to answer your question, yes, they are herbs. There are herbs that can be taken, you know, for wellness-based issues. Majority of them um, are classified or a lot of them are classified as adaptogen herbs. And then, uh, the other herbs, the other mushrooms, they're possible adaptogens. They have adaptogen-like qualities. Mm. So an herb is any plant with medicinal properties. Yes, that is my definition of an herb. That is herbalist definition of an herb um, is plants that have this no value. So that's how, you know, cannabis <laughs> can be a herb. And there's certain trees, the leaves of it are herbs, even the roots from the trees or the bark from a tree, that's an herb. Yeah. Wow. That's that's really cool. Um, I, I, I wonder if you know, earlier we were talking about like ceremonial grade. You're like, I don't know if they pray over it or something, but you know, it's probably marketing purposes. Um, well, um, I, I I don't know how familiar you are with this, but the, uh, but uh, alchemy, this uh, this uh, maybe pseudoscience, like uh, years ago, uh, centuries ago, hundreds of years ago, uh, alchemists were trying to use herbs around like times of like a- astrology. Uh, they were connecting astrology, the things that are going on in space with uh, with uh, different times of pulling herbs. Are there are there is there any reality to the pulling of herbs around um, around like a full moon? Are, are, I know that like certain flowers are are blooming during different times uh, in in very uh, close connection to maybe a moon cycle or things like this. Is there anything that you know of like that? Um, 100%. One thing that I've been blessed to do is travel. And uh, I've traveled to a lot of indigenous countries where people inside of the, those countries actually believe in harvesting based off of the moon cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, more recently, I went to Dominica, which is a Caribbean island next to Martinique um, and Guadeloupe. And I was making, I was taking a coconut oil, a traditional coconut oil making class. And so the person was explaining 
saying that you want to harvest the coconut when it is a full moon because then you can get more coconut juice. And that wasn't the first time that I heard that, but it was quite interesting. And everyone on the island, they went by this idea of harvesting coconuts during full moon because of the full moon energy. Um, so that was one experience that I had. The I do believe that you know, the moon cycle can link up to a lot of things. Even women's PMS, women's cycles can link up to the moon cycles. You can infuse your herbs with the moon energy. I went to another country, um, Caribbean country. I love the Caribbean, Belize. And it, um, he was saying uh, about a different different herbs you can take that you take them, you know, during certain times of, you know, the, the day or the night, but it was based off of the moon cycle. So this moon cycle, you know, idea, this moon industry idea, it didn't come from alchemists. It came from our ancestors. They've been doing this for a while and people are now trying to understand the science behind it. Um, so yeah, I find that to be interesting. But me personally, um, I've never personally taken, well, let me stop. I have used herbs um, in a lot of my meditations. And so a lot of times if I am drinking a tea, I have have made solar and moon based infusions to just help more with my intention. So if I do, you know, full moon meditations or new moon meditations, I will, you know, drink a tea that has been infused with a moon energy to help with my manifestations and my meditation. So I have done that. I mean, I can say that anything I have manifested to this day has, has happened. So I don't know if, you know, that's because of the moon energy. I'm not sure, but I do incorporate moon energy in my, in my meditations, but it is an indigenous based teaching. Abriel, the herbalist is a manifest queen for <laughs> yes, sure. I am. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Uh, for sure. Uh, did you do anything special for the solar eclipse? I did not. I did not. I think I was like traveling. <laughs> and so it was just something um, that I, you know, enjoyed myself, you know, as far as I do meditate. So I do, you know, moon cycle meditations, just because I do believe in the power of them. Um, and so I do think that I, you know, did some med some meditations, but that's about it. Nothing yeah. too extraordinary. Beautiful. So um, so your your farm, 87 acres. Um, uh, you know, I've personally heard you speak about some of the challenges that were uh, that were involved in in putting that together. Um, just like like one acre of land, how many herbs are you growing? How many different varieties of herbs are you growing on like a single acre or a couple of acres of land? How how, how much land are you are you using just for the 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 growing of herbs um so i like to call my farm a farm in progress um it is a fip <laughs> it is not a full farm guys this is i'm just yeah. starting <laughs> yes people are like let me to the farm i'm like it's nothing yet <laughs> <laughs> like it's just seeds. Um, so I am not farming for mass consumption. I am not farming to feed, you know, many of people. I'm farming for sustainability purposes. So to be able to sustain myself with food and my family with food, as well as to grow the herbs that I use on myself and to be able to grow the herbs that I would use in my actual business. Um, right now, I don't see myself farming on more than an acre. Um, right now, I'm starting off with a quarter acre acre. Um, just the idea of so much land, more land becomes more work. I don't got time for that. So <laughs> I'm sticking with, you know, small and farming sustainably because I don't see myself again, mass, that mass production of actual herbs. And honestly, people don't need a lot of land to grow food. Like there is, you know, like people who farm off of a quarter acre and they're like, I, I actually put this in one of my courses. I have a course on how to buy land. And you can make a, you know, a six figure salary off of farming on a quarter acre. If you're not trying to make a salary, you can feed a family of four, you know, off of just a quarter acre or less of farming. So you don't need a lot of area to farm. Most of the land will be turned into an herbal retreat space. So I have about um, one or two acres dedicated to the retreat space. I'm going to farm off of about a quarter to a half of it. And the rest will be, you know, just 
herbs growing in the natural habitats, the glamping tents. I have several trails and different streams that run the, through the property. I also have different fruit trees. I have pear trees, apple trees, persimmons. And so it's just going to be a tranquil place where you can come and learn about herbs as well as, you know, relax. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, 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 do you have peaches, Georgia peaches? I don't have peaches, not to my knowledge. It, they should be on the property somewhere. I don't have pears, apples, persimmons. I've seen chestnuts. I've seen grapes, but I have not yet seen peaches. They, I should have them. They probably are somewhere. <laughs> Georgia peaches, right? I thought that, you know, I thought that's a thing. Um, that, that's, that's awesome. Uh, it, it, it sounds like just such a magnificent, uh, place in your life that you are in. Uh, I, I love that you are teaching. I love that you, it, it that, that person that told you that you are, uh, that you are, you know, taking advantage of plants is, is out of their minds. It's, uh, it's so, it's so crazy. What, what are the plants here for? They're, they, they are serving us. If we serve the land, that land will serve us, you know? Let's talk about, you know, a little bit of that. And then I do have to, you know, go on a little bit. So just to close on, you know, the idea of capitalism and taking from something to benefit, you know, something else, everything in the environment is they have certain capitalistic features like that, this whole exploitation, literally plants take from the sun to give us, you know, to give them food and energy to be able to grow so that we can now take from the plant and we can eat it for our body. Like in nature, there's this whole capitalistic symbiotic relationship with the plants, with the bees who take from the pollen to now give to other plant, you know, to, to pollinate. There is this whole symbiotic relationship when it comes to 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 taking from something to be able to benefit something else. And so people, you know, this whole idea that you should just be broke, <laughs> you know, and struggling while doing this, you know, and giving all of your energy, I don't believe in that. I believe that there has to be a balance and that you shouldn't have to give all of your energy and, you know, be depleted and broke in mindset, but yet the whole world is now benefiting from your energy because they are now healed. They're this, they're that. I think that it's an energy exchange. Change. And it is okay to give yourself and to, you know, expect an energy exchange of income. It's how you keep the lights on is <laughs> how you're able to continue to do what you're doing. And so I understand that I am unconventional in my methods by teaching people how to do this, but it literally is the way that life works. And I hate that people see this space and just because they see, you know, a black woman being successful, you know, in this space that it is looked down upon, you know, especially me being somebody who has Native heritage. So that's what I'll say off that, you know, as long as you're coming from it from respect, then that, you know, that's what matters. I, I love what you're doing. I'm inspired by it. I'm sure that other people will be inspired by it as well when they listen to this conversation. I think that um, there, there is there is this uh, whole idea that I've I've had for a long time in my mind that uh, we had this agricultural revolution and we kind of missed the the end of it to uh, to really understand how to grow from the earth, how to grow from seed, how to utilize all of these herbs and and plants for all of the natural benefit that uh, that the that the earth has to give us uh we 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 didn't we sort of didn't finish that because we got super excited with the industrial revolution and metals and stuff and that has done very negative things to our bodies it's put metals in our bodies and in, in ways that are not serving us and then now we're we're in this technological revolution but but i think that in order to be successful here it is giving back to others in this in this way that makes it all practical like uh, you 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 now have this farm but you utilized the you utilized the system to uh to create an autonomous living experience outside of the uh, outside of the direct influence of the system and now you're you're living your own life in your own freedom in your own way and uh it, it's beautiful it's inspiring Thank you so much, Abriel. It, it, you are the divine expression of an herbalist. I, I really, really appreciate this information. I appreciate the 
the amount of knowledge and and just all that you are doing and are. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, thank you for, you know, helping me out at the festival, you know. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, helping me be able to keep clean. You know, I do not, I'm not sure if I've ever told you that I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate your help. This is a whole inside joke for those who are listening. It's a little inside joke we have, but yes, if it was not for this guy, I would not have been able to cleanse my body. So I do <laughs> appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate, you know, just meeting us, meeting and being able to connect on this level and you wanting to now bring me onto your platform to be able to share my knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, uh, have a have a great day working on your farm. Yeah, well, today I already worked on the farm earlier today, but now, you know, it's, it's work time. So we're going to be inside. I love that, too. Uh, you, you know, I'm originally from I, I always say Omaha, Nebraska, but I'm originally from Iowa. Uh, so, you know, in, in either state, a lot of farmland. I, I, I don't come from farm specifically, but uh, I, I have uh, family members in a small town of a thousand people, less than a thousand people. Um, it, it's all very farm country, you know. It's very rural, so um, it, it's it, this. It's a cool idea that you you work in the morning. You're working on a farm. You're working uh, before noon. You you want to get everything done before noon when the when the sun is high. Uh, it's beating down on you and. Uh, um, you know, so uh, it, it, it's cool to get that out of the way and then and then enjoy your day. So thank you so much once again, bro. Yeah, thank you for having me. Bye, everybody. Oh, I didn't tell them where to find me. Um, <laughs> tell them, uh, please, please let us know where to find you. Um, I, 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 I do. I, I do cap the video uh, with letting uh, letting them know as well. But you have uh, a couple of Instagrams at least. And uh well, one is uh, Beauty Herbs and Tea. Another one is the Black Girly Farmer. Um, but well, where where should people go to find you? <laughs> Yes. So if you want to learn anything about teas, about herbal medicine and just all things, you know, beauty, herbs and tea, you can find me on my main herbalist Instagram page that is at beauty, herbs and tea, B-E-A-U-T-Y, herbs, H-E-R-B-S and A-N-D-T-T-A, spelled exactly like that. There are some, you know, little fraud pages. So if it's not spelled exactly like that, it's not me. (laughs) That's going to be the page of over 100,000 and followers. Um, my farming page, I am do- I'm documenting my farming journey of opening up my herb farm in Eco Village that is at the girly black farmer on Instagram. And then on YouTube, I am beauty herbs and tea. Um, I think that's it. I have a TikTok, but I don't post on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so people, you like, like what we, what we said earlier, I, if I wanted to learn herbalism, if I wanted to learn herbal knowledge, and I do, if, if I want to learn about business, I want to learn about getting land. This is the kind of person that I want to go to, to learn a real, the divine, the, the herbalist, a real, the herbalist. I want to learn from, from her, I, I, you know, uh, so so, so definitely check out the uh, the educational things that you you have courses on your website, beauty herbs and tea. Um, you, you have teas, and uh, and I I can't wait to see more of what comes out of this farm and and all that you do. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You are the realest one you know.